affordable flexible storage is here. Richiger R-Series bagger and unloader from Show Me Shortline. Maximize your profits with adaptable storage and management. Reduce storage costs and gain a competitive edge by selling at the right time. Visit us online at showmeshortline.com. Our weed of the week today is a difficult to control weed for many farmers, it's water hemp. Yeah, water hemp is so tough to stop and part of the reason why is it comes up just a little bit later than a lot of other weeds and so many guys don't use pre-emerge herbicides. I just don't understand that, why you wouldn't use a pre. But if you don't, you're gonna be out there multiple times with Roundup. A lot of guys we know will spray in soybeans three times. There are a handful of guys that even spray four times and a lot of that is due to water hemp because it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And you know what, water hemp can grow really fast. I mean, we're talking three to four inches per day. So it only takes a week and you can Let's, have just some little plants and all of a sudden they're above your meat. It's a lot more exciting than watching the grass grow because <laughs> it's, you're actually getting somewhere with the water hemp and it yeah. will outgrow corn. I've seen water hemp outgrow 10 yep. foot tall cornfields. So it's a tough weed. And the reason that it's so tough to kill with herbicide is that it has very waxy leaves. There's no hairs on the leaves and stems. It looks a lot like red red pigweed, but it's definitely different. We call this smooth pigweed, but it's called water hemp. And the thing to keep in mind too, is it's ALS resistant in many cases. So many of those ALS products, like the Pursuit family of chemistry, we used to use Pursuit to control red root pigweed, it worked great, but here comes water hemp and it doesn't get it. Okay, so let's talk about control a little bit. In wheat, it's pretty easy because just about anything will stop it in wheat. In corn, you're gonna need to throw in one of the tank mix partners for Roundup. Use some Status, use some Laudus or Callisto, something like that. Don't use Buctril. Buctril is weak on water hemp and all the pigweeds, so don't use Buctril, but just about anything else with Roundup will help. Now we get to soybeans, that's the tough one. Well, soybeans, you have to control it pre-emerge. You really, really, really have to get something out there like a Valor or an Authority first, or even a full rate of a Treflan or a Prowl, or a strong rate, I should say, like at least a pint and a half of Treflan or at least three pints of the old Prowl EC. You know, something like that to do a decent job holding it back so when you come post-emerge there aren't so many of them out there. Yeah, so what you have to do post-emerge is you need to up your Roundup rate or you could throw in something like Flexstar, Cobra, Ultra Blazer, but if you remember those products from 20 years ago when you sprayed conventional beans, they're what we call burners and you're going to see some leaf burn probably that same day, if not for that, sure that the next day. They aren't used to in Roundup Ready That's Beans. Right. What I say is this, water hemp in our experience has been very nitrogen sensitive. When you have some ammonium sulfate in the spray tank with that Roundup, it really accentuates the control. So do add some ammonium sulfate at 17 pounds per 100 gallons. If you want to try one of the tank mix partners, you sure can as well. Well, once again, our Weed of the Week is water hemp. Do the best job you can to get it under control if you want top yields on your farm. That's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned. There's more Ag PhD to come right after this.